Hi, what's up? This is Johnny Six Blocks. This week on Snatches and Scotch, we talked to Justin Tamani of CrossFit Solid Ground. He is a regional athlete, 2015, in the Canada East and Northeast Regional in Hartford, Connecticut, coming up. So this week talks about preparation and all the things he needs to do to get prepared for regionals and kind of everyday life. Hope you enjoy the show. Snatch and Scotch. I am your host, Toby Bono, with my co-host Adam Wade, uh, and we're at Solid Ground, uh, across the Solid Ground, with uh, my boy Justin Tamani, good friend of ours. Hello. Uh, and uh, we actually came up in CrossFit, kind of together. Uh, we used to work back, uh, work out back in the day, and he just uh, we kind of went like this, and then all of a sudden, Justin went like <laughs> right up there. Uh, and we're here to talk about uh, being a competitor. He's going to uh, super regionals this year uh, his first time making it to regionals and he's dedicated himself for a lot of hard work to get there um, before you we go any further go to www.stashandscotch.com sign up for the newsletter uh, get a bunch of good stuff there and uh, follow us on Instagram Twitter uh, Facebook and give us a five star review if you like the show all right so Justin uh, th- first of all how long have you done CrossFit for before we even start because you're a regionals athlete People come to CrossFit, like, I want to compete right away. How, how long have you worked for this? So I've been doing CrossFit for about three years now, I think. Yeah. This is my third Open. So I guess I started actually right after the 2012? Yeah. 12 Open? The yeah. math adds up. I don't know. That's pretty good, man. Yeah. So in no, three no. years, you've made Super Regionals. People yeah. Have been 12, crossed, people CrossFit for 10 years and <laughs> aren't making Regionals. Yeah. So what sets you apart? Why why you uh, why do you want to compete so hard? When I started, I had the the idea of competing in mind. Yeah. Um. So started right after the open. I was like, oh, this is cool. I wanna I wanna try this next year. I ended up going to regionals in 2012, um, and being a volunteer there. And I was like, okay, this is cool. cool. I want to do this. Like, I want to be out there competing. Yeah. Uh, next year, the open came up. Did it. Did well. Uh, top 60 went that year. I was like 69th. Oh yeah. Um, had some weaknesses didn't go next year dropped down to 48 uh it was like 91st i again had like w- one weakness one area that uh kind of held me back and uh was it the deadlifts box jumps yeah, yeah. Box jumps. <laughs> you had an injury though too that year right or a couple of injuries um yeah so i just had surgery in september before the 2014 open um then i injured a disc in my back Oh wow! Uh, like in September, in so like August surgery, disc injury, September-ish, and then uh, I was healing up, coming up into the open. I was okay, but the heavy deadlifts and the box jumps just slowed me right down. And it was something like three or four reps separated me between oh, man. 91st and like top 40. Wow! So, um, spent a year just working on weaknesses over and over. Actually, spent the last probably two years working on weaknesses, but. Um, had two surgeries in the past two years and t- taken a toll on the training. So yeah. I've had a full year here with, uh, with uh, just training, working on weaknesses. My coach has just programmed the shit out of weaknesses. I don't know. Now, so. you were uh, so I guess, I guess after hearing you know people hear hey he's only done CrossFit for three years and he's already made it to regionals and it seems like you were highly competitive right from the get go, sort of on the cusp. Now. You were an athlete before you started doing CrossFit, right? Like, you've sort of been an athlete your whole life? Yeah, so I played baseball from, like, ever since I can remember yeah. to, uh, I played in college, went to Erie Community College in Buffalo, played there for two years, and then went to right. Brock and played there for three years, Brock University. Yeah, um, Badgers, what's up? Did you go there? Yeah, I went to Brock. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, for, for our first year. Oh, yeah. Just, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> what position did you play? So I was a catcher. So you're so, good at squatting. Yeah, so squatting kind of yeah. came easy to me. Uh, did just 
a ton of squats, right? Yeah. Constantly catching, bullpens, everything. So legs were always pretty strong. So I didn't really have to build up the leg strength like some other people do. Yeah. But a lot of the posterior chain stuff, that took a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting to note that like uh, competing versus training and having fun is a big difference. And, and people who come into CrossFit and try to compete, uh, but they can't do a pull-up or they can't squat properly, that's going to take a really long time and you may or may not ever make it to regionals. And you know, the way CrossFit's kind of exponentially growing right now, if you're coming into CrossFit, can't do a pull-up and you can't squat and you're in your twenties, you're probably not going to go to regionals. Yeah. When, when I started, I don't know if this is normal or not, but my first workout when I was at CrossFit New Market yeah. was uh, death by pull-ups. Oh so God. One minute, one, two, yeah. two, all the way up. So you can't go. My f- first time doing a workout was, I uh, started doing a workout at CrossFit, um, I was like 17 plus 12 or something like that in death by pull-ups. Oh, my God. That was my first time. I think my best was like workout. 14 plus something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do a pull-up. That's crazy. Yeah, that, so yeah. that was my first time. That's and then amazing. when we did CrossFit Total for the first time, like, you know, my best squat was like 365. Wow. For, that's good. You know. That's really good for, for a person just starting out. Yeah. Sure. So. Yeah. But I think it's important to note that, I mean, just starting out but he was an athlete in yeah, yeah it was place, an right? athlete like, didn't have a ton of focus on on that kind of stuff like i spent a lot of time in the gym yeah um but like what's crossfit you know what are kipping but it's pull-ups? Weird, so like I, this a lot is of how you do kipping pull up okay uh, yeah like a lot of a lot of great crossfitters are former baseball players why do you think that is it like the fast twitch kind of stop and go I don't know. I think it's just because w- you have to be flexible in your shoulders to play. Yeah. So that plays a big part in it. Um, some sports, they don't have that upper body flexibility, right? When you're throwing a baseball, it requires yeah. a ton of external rotation of your shoulder. So, I mean, one side's more flexible than the other, but that overhead position is a pretty big deal. Yeah. So having that mobility in the upper body plays a big part in it. For me as a catcher, played a big part in it. Um, but the the – fast twitch i mean we we do train to move quickly yeah for a short burst yeah which kind of helps but i mean in crossfit these days i don't think it really helps that much it's so short though in baseball yeah but i guess the fast speed and then rest you know would help yeah um i mean i know there's research coming out now that shows that the old adage that you're muscle types whether you're predominantly fast twitch or slow twitch isn't necessarily holding up as far as research is concerned that you can actually change your muscle type so potentially the the high speed output of baseball players translates to crossfit quicker because you already have more of those muscle types but physiologically you train enough um, and train the right stuff you can change your overall muscle composition to be more fast twitch as compared to slow twitch Um, now you as far as where you train here at CrossFit Solid Ground, you're an owner of the gym, correct? One of the owners? Yeah, so I'm one of three owners. Okay. Um, so as far as training enough to make it to regionals and then balancing that with coaching, I'm assuming you coach, yeah? I you- coach quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> you're always moving. You're always on your feet. Plus yeah. you're putting in how many workouts a day do you do as, f- as far as training goes, not just coaching, but like, what do you do as far as training? Just, I'm trying to give people yeah. a, a sense of what the volume is required to do this and what the life of kind of a, an athlete striving to make the regionals is going to be like. So most weeks, uh, let's say I have two active recovery days. So right now it's been Monday and Thursday, just like an active recovery day, which is anywhere from 45 to an hour of just constant work. So it's just something like row, you know, salt bike, couple of you know, chest to bar pull ups, some box jumps, some kettlebell swings, nothing nothing like I like how chest to bar pull ups are active recovery. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a brutal workout for me. <laughs> but it's it's all slow pace, so it was all like zone one work, like just constant yeah. movement, four to six sets of like ten different movements. Yeah. Um the more the better. The, yeah, just more just keep moving, right? Yeah. Um some days uh sorry, the other days, right now I've had two sessions a day. AM session is something more aerobic, so um, salt bike for you know x amount of time, some rowing intervals. It, it depends on the day. Yeah. Usually that's been the AM, and then the PM is more um, weights and more higher output stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, morning is usually more uh, aerobic. Have you tried it. like heavier lifting in the morning and then switching that up? Sometimes um, with the regional training right now. I've been 
yeah. kind of playing it like we would uh, we would see in regionals. Because um, I find that really hard. I, yeah, like I'm not a morning person at all. So like an eight nine a.m. session, I can do like a conditioning session, but I, or like a really slow squatting session. Yeah, but I don't know if I can do like a weightlifting session or anything like higher output. Mm-hmm. Like my a.m. sessions end up being around like ten ten thirty, just because the like I'll come in coach until nine thirty ten o'clock. Yeah, just start warming up and then go. So like it's still like ten o'clock and I can't hit numbers nearly like I can hit after uh, in my afternoon evening session. Yeah. So like, I, I I've tried to do it lift in the morning and yeah, not happening. not happening. It's funny because like if if the games decide to program something really heavy right off the bat in the morning, then it's just like oh well. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, yeah. I mean I could I'm sure I could get up for it because we've had to do it in competitions before. Yeah. But just in training after you've already been coaching for two yeah. three hours, for me it's just like I just can't turn it on like that right away. Competition mode, you get the adrenaline going and stuff, so it's a little bit different. But so how, uh, how do you how do you after like coaching for several hours in the morning, just kind of get going? Like, don't you have days where you just like, ah, I'm just gonna go to sleep. Naps play a big part <laughs> in, in, in the recovery process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some days, like, um, you know, I'm up at five thirty or whatever it is. Here, coach two classes, three sessions maybe. Um, That's already mentally exhausting. Yeah, like it taxes. You it can be. Yeah. yeah, and then I'll take a. Some days I'll take a nap. Some days I won't. If I take a nap, I, I've had to limit it, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, get back up, kind of shake it out, and then go do my morning session, whatever it is that day. So I did that last week with, like, a 5K run or something in the morning. So I yeah. took, like, a nap for, like, half an hour, got up, a couple quick drinks, and just went up for the run. So he took shots of whiskey and then did a 5K run. Yeah. <laughs> just, just to numb the legs a little bit. That's right. That's it. <laughs> did you find that – coaching I mean, it sounds like you coach a lot would you coach like five six classes a day kind of thing uh yeah in the days where i'd say at least twice a week three times a week i'm coaching anywhere from five to six classes okay it, as, as far uh, as re- recovery is concerned do you find that because if you think of like low end output while you're coaching you know you demo squats you're always on your legs mm-hmm. you're moving around is that positive or negative for recovery i know it's mentally taxing but as far as your legs because you are constantly moving them compared to someone who would say train like crazy and then go sit in an office do you think it's beneficial do you find it helpful like on days where you don't have to coach where your legs feel worse or your arms feel worse when you haven't had to coach and move around as much i'm just curious if um i'm always moving around so yeah. i don't really notice it uh i don't really notice a big difference between if i've coached or if i haven't coached i, haven't, I guess i haven't really yeah. thought too much about it but it's like active recovery i guess is what i'm at right because you are constantly moving you demo yeah. squats all day long yeah or demo whatever the movement yeah, is yeah, yeah. but um Zone one, you're constantly zone, zone one. one. I, I feel like I feel like if I don't, hour if I don't move and I sit down too long, yeah. and then I try to train, I'm more prone to injury or tightness, and I I feel like crap. It takes me a lot longer to warm up and get going. I mean, I guess that's part of it, right? Like I don't I don't sit down, so I don't notice yeah. it. Even on days where I'm not coaching the class, like I'm still wandering around, cleaning up. You know, there's other things we got to do here. So, let's say one of the other guys has his noon class. Like I'm never sitting at the computer for more than like 15 minutes straight. Yeah, because you know. I, I just get stir crazy. So I'll sit there and I'll go walk and look at class and then come back. Okay. I'll do something. Oh, okay. What's class doing? Go out there and like yeah. wander around, clean up the gym, whatever it is. So I mean, the, I think it was only like once a week where I actually sit down and program. And that's mm-hmm. even then I like get antsy and start wandering around. Yeah. So there's no like time spent, you know, I don't have a desk job. So I think so that's, that's, consistent across a lot of the really good crossfitters is that they don't sit still right like everything yeah. we hear about rich froning the guy gets up and he works out and his wife's mad at him because he can't cuddle on the couch for too long no but he, he yeah. just keeps going right and yeah. i think that's a a common trait for at least for crossfitters for high functioning crossfitters or, or highly competitive crossfitters is that they don't sit still well and then when they sleep they just sleep fast and then they get <laughs> up and do it again all over again yeah like yeah. i mean I, i'm in bed for like 10 minutes and i'm out yeah like nice. i don't you know Go well, down. let's watch a movie tonight. Yeah. What? what? Yeah, I passed. Do we even do we even turn the movie on? <laughs> <laughs> so, how, what, uh, with uh, lastly, what work life balance? How do you balance you here teaching classes, training, taking naps, running back and forth, and food? What the oh, hell food. do you do for food? Because like, how do you plan in for food? Food, in- foods. I know exactly when I need to eat for yeah. what I'm doing that day, 
Now, sometimes it doesn't always happen. So um, I've gotten to a pretty good routine of what I eat when. Um, the days when I don't eat at the right time, I can tell you I have a bad session Yeah. right away. Cause so what does that I'm look either, like? Okay, so let's just say I coach at 7.30 and then an hour class and then next class at 9. So in between 7.30 and 9, I'll have some oatmeal. I guess, actually, I guess you should say on the way down, I'll have like a Quest bar, protein bar or something. Yeah. Um, in between, I'll have two packets of like instant oatmeal mixed with a little protein powder. Yeah. Um, so that brings me – and then I'll do my AM session, whatever that is, after the, the 9 a.m. class is done. Um. I like to eat around 11.30, so I'll get like a, a fairly good size lunch in. Coach the noon class, uh, then I'll start warming up again around 1.30, 2 o'clock. Uh, when I'm done, have a shake, eat whatever, you know, dinner or dinner one, I guess, is lunch two, dinner one. Yeah. Then I'll coach 4.30, 5.30, 6 or 4.30, 5, 45, 7, be done here at 8.00 try to snack on something on the way home eat dinner too yeah you know it's, it's like 9 30 do, do you do 10 o'clock and then i go to bed do you like plan a lot of it or like tupperware that or what do you do to like have it here and ready whole chickens just whole chickens whole chickens uh grocery store was just down the street so oh, we'll, nice. we'll get we'll we'll get some some pre-cooked stuff uh eat savage We've been working mm, nice. with them for the last little while. And we got a promo on the wall there. But um, so we've, we've got some Eat Savage. Uh, during these high volume trainings for regionals, that's been really key. Because yeah. I don't want to run out midday and then have to come back. I don't want to run out after I'm done training and then come back before class because I never have enough time. Mm-hmm. As I always end up trying to like keep going and, and cool down longer, stretch longer. So if I have stuff that's like ready to go, just pop it in the microwave and we're good. So Eat Savage has been nice. really helpful in this last like – know what it is stretch since the open ended really yeah do you eat different um for strength days compared to metcon days or, or sorry i guess morning and evening sessions like more carb less protein do you mix it up at all and have it tailored towards the specific workout that you're doing or do you have the same stuff pretty much every day i have a lot of the same stuff lots of rice lots of meat lots of vegetables um don't do a ton of potatoes. I'd rather do rice than potatoes. I just and your body, like if your body's more. used to the same kind of food, then there's no like guessing. Yeah, yeah. Right? I I know what works well and what doesn't work well. Yeah. So the timing of, of certain things, like if I eat the wrong thing at the wrong time, like I'm gonna feel it during my workout. Yeah. So one of our favorite lunch spots, if I eat it after the noon class as opposed to before, the session's not gonna be good. Mm. So I try to keep that because it's a heavier meal, it's a little bit bigger. I try to keep that for after my PM session before classes. Is that sushi? No, a Korean barbecue. Oh, Korean barbecue. Yeah. Mm, nice. Sushi's Friday nights. Oh, okay. Friday nights. <laughs> Sweet. So what are your expectations for regional? Regionals. Expectations? Um, after seeing the workouts come out, you know, you see them roll out day by day, right? Two at a time. It's kind of like, oh, well, I don't know about that one. Okay, that one's okay. Um, I think I'll do... I don't. I have no expectations going into it. Yeah. I want to do the best I can do. So just have fun. Just have fun with it. You know, I've talked to a couple of guys about enjoying the experience of it, um, not being mm-hmm. too caught up in you know like Matt Fraser's right there. You know, all these big name guys are going to be there, right? Yeah. So try not to get caught up in that and just do my thing. Pay attention to warming up, cooling down, yeah. uh, recovery stuff. Um, I think one thing that has been told me by a few people is, you know, we're there to compete. We're not there to spectate. So yeah. that's the one thing I'm going to try and, and focus on. Like, you know, I want to see some things, but I don't want to get caught up in it. Yeah. Dude, win the whole thing. Shut up. Yeah. Just get it done. All right. <laughs> so um, we'll be back after this and talk about how you're getting to regionals, uh, your favorite type of gear, and we'll talk a little bit about some people in your region. All right. Um, peace out. And we're back. Um, so real quick, uh, we have a few people who uh, are really big time in Canada East and have had some pretty unfortunate things happen to them in training uh, and had to have 
at the last minute back out of regionals. Um, so that I think that's like the most devastating thing ever. You work so hard to get to that one point, and then all of a sudden something happens, and you just can't compete. And I think they made a very intelligent choice, taking care of themselves for longevity reasons. What are you doing to um, kind of keep yourself healthy uh, and maintain all this fitness you've gained, uh, you know, all, all, all these uh, strengths that you've built over the past two, three years? Uh, and how are you staying safe? So lots of, uh, lots of mobility work, yeah. way more than before. Even during the Open, I've been putting in a lot more time before and after just to stay mobile, you know, decrease the injuries, you know, you get little nagging things every, every day, every week, like yeah. just to try to work on them, try to stay in front of them. And like, if you feel something coming, you know, let's, let's jump on top of it early. Um, I've had a couple of things that have come up that n were not ideal. Yeah. So I did some, some things during the open that I didn't expect to do, you know, it was just like a training session to maintain and ended up tweaking this, tweaking that. So yeah. I've been seeing Dr. Wade a yeah. lot. Been fixing them up. Yeah. Nice. Um, our physio, one of our physios that works here has been helping me out quite a bit. Um, so she's been working with me like once a week at least. Um, been seeing Dr. Wade once, twice a week as well. Um, just trying to, to be smart about things, not to push it on certain days, pushing it more on days when I know I'm feeling good. Um, and just the recovery work, the recovery work. I'm a little bit, I don't want to say I'm older, but I'm probably older than, than some of the guys we're going up against. For sure. And, uh, You're in your late twenties, right? What? Mid to late twenties. Yeah. I'm 27. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not that old, but like I'm older than some of the guys coming yeah. up. So, um, just been a lot of, uh, like I said, zone one recovery work, uh, that keeps me moving. Um, you know, stim different things like that. That's been, that's been big. Um, that's actually helped a lot with, you know, recovering my legs, yeah. my shoulders. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so constant, can constant chicken and rice, chicken and rice, yeah. sushi. Hey, it works for Wolverine, man. Why not? Hey, <laughs> chicken, rice, and sushi. Like that's it. That's it. That's all you need. A burrito <laughs> here and there. <laughs> so, so what's happening uh, with regionals? How, how are you getting the regionals? Um, so they're no longer in Toronto, right? They are now, no longer now that we in have Toronto. these super regionals. Yeah. We were spoiled for Where a are they long in time. Hartford? They're in Hartford, Hartford Connecticut. Connecticut. So uh, we put a GoFundMe together. Um, Rob, my uh, business partner here, he, he started off. We've had some so great this is, donations. This yeah. is crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we don't we don't make a ton of money here. Um, so we, we put a cr little crowdfunding together to help cover the cost of registration, hotel, travel expenses, um, you know. Nice. Excuse me. Being in Hartford, you know, we got to go down a couple days early. We're going to stay an extra day at the end just because we don't, we don't really know when it's going to end. We're going to be driving back overnight. So we're going to yeah. stay the Sunday night traveling back, um, you know. So it's, it comes at a pretty good cost. Yeah. Um, don't really have a any sponsors that are covering anything for me so um that's insane and so the the community outreach <laughs> yeah the community from, outreach is yeah is, is it mainly from your gym is it sort it of crossfitters and people from sort of all over who have started pitching in like do you do you know where the money yeah, is yeah, coming yeah every from? every donation donation has a name nice. sure um so i don't think i have any anonymous ones but you know family friends uh a lot, most of the people are within the gym but yeah. um you know friends from up in Newmarket. um you know, one of my college roommates pitched in, you know, That's cool. some buddies from high school, um, even a CrossFitter from uh, Ottawa. Oh, he, cool. he, he dropped a couple bucks in there. So it was just amazing to see all the support that everybody's nice. already given. So, I mean, if you're watching, thank you. And it's not over. If you do no, want to support Justin, you can still help fund him. Yeah, there's a link on our Facebook page. So if you go to uh, Facebook and search for Solid Ground Athletic Academy, there's yeah. a link on there. If you go to GoFundMe site and just look in the Toronto area, uh, I believe you see my smiling yeah. face there. And if you go to Snatch and Scotch Facebook page, we shared it as well, I think. Did you? Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So get it done. I can't believe you, have, you don't have any sponsors. So, uh, yeah, like I'm I'm an ambassador, but yeah. it's not really uh, a sponsorship. sponsorship. It's more of a community partner with uh, Lululemon. So yeah. Lululemon Promenade Mall. Nice. 
uh, where you work with them, and then the uh, the guys over at Treadmill Factory, we work with them. Mm-hmm. So they've kind of helped me out with this one here. They've got the the True Form. So I've been in, the, I've gotten in the store and got a, got to go off for a little run on the True Form treadmill. Nice. So that was fun. Is it the? Yeah, yeah, the one we're going to use at regionals. It's the yeah. same one. They've got it just in their showroom. So I'm sitting sweet. there like an idiot running in their showroom, sweating <laughs> everywhere. It's awesome. Yeah, that's sweet. So, um, what uh, going to regionals? What what's your favorite type of gear? Because I I remember when we uh we would lift, you had some funky ass like uh, uh pulling straps. Your lifting straps are like really thin and uh like I use like the Iron Made ones, right? Like your your weightlifting straps. Yeah. So I noticed those right away. It was like, where do you get these straps from? thinner and like you know uh, aqua color and oh those are those are from hook grip oh are they the hook really? grip web store yeah so um i mean we crossfit we got a little bit of everything right so yeah. i've got as long as it's neon yeah uh I, i've got leather lifting straps from treadmill factory yeah. um got the 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 other ones from hook grip just some days i'll use one some days i use the other just i don't really even use them that often yeah uh you know, Ray Ban knee sleeves have, have helped out quite a bit being a catcher and knees are a little banged up. So yeah. Got some Ray Ban knee sleeves. Um Adidas lifting shoes. I love the Adidas lifting yeah, shoes. Yeah, they're, they're nice. I don't like the colors though. Yeah. I had mine break, so I I, I got you a pair of the white ones. ones. Right? Yeah. And then the heel split right down the middle. Like what? there's a crack through it. I could bend both sides. Really? Yeah, so I took them back and then I had to go with the red and black. I don't like them. I have the red and white, the original, like the ones. I had those. Yeah. yeah. Had some problems with those ones and they ripped. Oh, yeah. And so I got the white ones and then they the heel broke and then they replaced them with the other ones before I went down to Miami to do this thing. Crazy. You need to go back to the old school wooden ones. The one they, that, like, somebody's got to tell them. Video. Yeah. Down to right. Miami. What was in Miami for those who uh, don't know why you went down there? So I we know went, why you went. Yeah. Yeah. So I went down to Miami to do the uh, NPGL, the grid league, uh, one of the pro days down there. Yep. Got invited to do that, so I just went for the experience of that. And how was, was the cool experience? environment? Like, did you meet? Like, did you talk with any of the coaches? Did you? Yeah, I spoke with the coaches a um, little bit. It, it was it was different than I expected. Um, grid racing looks like it'd be pretty fun to do, mm-hmm. so that's why I wanted to get into it. Um, so it was two days. It was Friday, Saturday. Uh, sorry, Saturday, Sunday. Um, this one was a little bit different than some of the other ones. We didn't do any racing. We just did the the elements testing. That they yeah, uh, they, they set like up eleven so. different things you do right or eight five the first day and then you five or six the second day you, all of them? you could do whatever you wanted to yeah. I, I chose to do all of them but yeah. you didn't have to um, nice so it was a little bit of different stuff um, it was a good experience but give us an example of a of an MPGL like one of the things you had to do one of the things so there was like twenty seconds I think of like max unbroken hang cleans at two forty five. Um, there's one test. It was like 30 seconds of max six inch deficit handstand pushups. Um, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off of chest to bar pull ups, then pistols and toes to bar. Notice that he he named all the things that he's really good at. Yeah, <laughs> skip some of that. <laughs> How many deadlifts? Dead. Uh, How the many de- heavy deadlifts? The deadlift one was it was weird. Jumps. The deadlift one that so there's a, a story with that one. Um, deadlift one was it was like a shuttle run, so you had to go like out 10 feet back then 20 back I think up to 40 or 50 feet yeah. and then after the fifth one I guess it was 50 feet come back then 10 deadlifts at 315 and it's all for for time so three two one go there's two of us we're going do the shuttle run boom 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 get back to deadlifts we go one two the guy across from me hits the third one and drops the bar and starts screaming and rolling around on the ground his hamstring cramped up oh so he, he's like rolling on the ground screaming and i'm still deadlifting looking around like what the hell's going on right now like i don't know if i should stop or just keep going so i i just finished it but i slowed down i was it was the last thing of day i was like okay let's just get through this at this point like you know no injuries we got the open we're in the middle of the open so yeah um everybody just went silent yeah everyone's like oh, i'm glad you weren't the kid in elementary school who like went back and picked up the kid in cross country who fell down and came in second because he beat you <laughs> no, like I was like, what? Am, what am I supposed to do? It was only ten reps, and I was already yeah. at like four. So I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. I get six reps, you and then I'm, it, man. I'm done. And this guy's on the ground, like literally screaming. Nobody came running over. Nobody went over to see him. Oh wow! Because they were waiting for me to finish. Oh. So he was nobody. Nobody touched him. Nobody went near him. It was ended up just being a cramp. Like he didn't tear his hamstring or anything That's like good. that. Yeah. But it was just a weird experience. 
for that Jeez. anyways yeah wow there you go folks he's focused on competition <laughs> he's not gonna stop for you <laughs> please are like focus matt frazier you're going down <laughs> yeah, anybody at uh, regionals that you're i mean i shouldn't say gunning for but excited about competing with right because it's, it's it's experience right you yeah i mean i'm excited with these guys to compete, to compete but compete with all these guys it's fun like i've never been on this stage before so i just want to go in and, and do the best i can I'm not really worried about what those other guys are doing because they're, they're in the same boat, right? They don't care who's beside them. They're just going to go and do the best they can. That's right. So I know pacing is a big thing, right? Pacing, going at your pace, doing what, you know, sticking to your game plan is, is pretty important here. So, yeah. um, you know, if I go out there and try to beat whoever's beside me, yeah, I mean, that's that's awesome. But there's 38 other guys that I got to worry about. And, yeah. you know, I know – if I go out too hot on some of these things, I'm just going to crash. So yeah. I need to know what I, I can push on and what I can't push for on. Yourself, yeah. And uh, that that's part of it for me is sticking to my game plan and uh, just every event sticking to my game plan, not worrying about it. Now, you know, when you get the crowd going. And it's easier said than done. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you, you get that, that push. That, yeah. So you're going to get pushed either way. But of course. Um, staying – within yourself and knowing what you got to do. And, you know, some of these aren't sprints, yeah. right? They're, they're long and they're pretty grueling. So staying within my game plan is kind of my focus. Smart. Are cool. there any workouts that you're really excited for that you think you could really excel at? I, 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 I want to get like to that last one, 15 muscle ups in the speed cleans. Like yeah, I, I just, I want to test that out. I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow actually, but nice. Um, how many of the workouts are you going to do ahead of time? Do you think you'll do all of them just to see how they feel? Like, are you like, cause we were here a couple of weeks ago and you were doing a test weekend, like a, a mock one before yeah, the workouts were released. Listen, so I've done like, this will be my second or third regional sim weekend. So it's just the timing of the workouts and the types of workouts. Um, my coach, you know, at, at OPEX, he's put it together. Um, so he's got me doing that again this weekend. And I think this is my last like high volume weekend. And then we're going to taper a little bit and try to be as fresh as possible going into it. Nice. Who's your coach? My name, uh, His name's James Taylor. He's with OPEX cool. down in Arizona. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, anything you want to plug in uh, for the gym or do you have like an Instagram page people can follow you at? As yes. An so this is Solid Ground Athletic Academy, you know, home of CrossFit Solid Ground. Um, so we're in like the Thornhill Markham area. If you want to come check us out, uh, Facebook is Solid Ground Athletic Academy. Uh, Instagram for myself is CFSG Justin. It's pretty easy to remember. Uh, all lowercase. Uh, what else we got? And you guys got an amazing new addition to the gym too. Yeah. Like awesome little weightlifting platform we got, and stuff. That's we just cool. added about 2,000 square feet of gym space. Nice. So we made it look a little nicer up front too, as you can see. This is the nicest entrance to a gym I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. We were talking about this the other day. We came Pretty in. Pretty swanky. We were like, it's yeah. like, a, like a bachelor pad. Like it's, it's incredible. Yeah, we you know we do kids' birthdays. We do. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and for anyone out there, like as far as the community aspect, it really go to the GoFundMe website. Hit up Justin. I mean, if you want to fund something that's worthwhile, he's the guy. So check that out, everyone who's going to listen to this. Absolutely. And do it soon. Yeah, yeah. we've only got what two weeks? One week? Two weeks? It's a long weekend, it? it's like, isn't it? Yeah, it's no, no, four. it's after long. It's the May 2 4, but it's not the long weekend. We, but the, yes, it, it is the long weekend. No. It's not the long no. weekend. No, no, it's no. The long weekend's next weekend, and then it's the week after. It's the weekend after. Oh, right, right. Yeah, Sorry. 22nd to 24th. The May 2 4 weekend is the, May, is, is the weekend before May 2 4. I should know yeah. this. My birthday is May 2 4. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on the long weekend. <laughs> no. We're going to wrap it up and uh, make sure you, again, sign up for the newsletter. Support Justin if you're in the Markham area, Thornhill area. Come check out Solid Ground. I, I had a client whose friend had a terrible experience with CrossFit. I sent him here. She tried it for a second time, and she just raves about it and has nothing but good things to say. So come check across the Solid Ground, uh, and uh, see you next week. All right? Peace out.